I was always wanting to be a director since I was a little kid. I was in L.A. visiting my second cousins, and I, I, my second cousin had one contact in the movie business, but it wasn't really the movie business, it was the television business. Mm. And he introduced me to this person who created Hogan's Heroes. I was about 15 at the time. And this guy said, well, you don't want to talk to me. You want to be a movie maker. Why don't you go next door? You know who's next door? I said, no, who? Jack Ford. I called him Jack Ford. He's Jack Ford's right next door. Huh. I'll, I'll, I'll take you across the hall. He takes me across the hallway and he takes me into the office. And Jack Ford's assistant or secretary, as they were called in those days, was sitting there. And, and Jack, John Ford wasn't there, and so she said I could wait. He was out at lunch back any minute, and I sat waiting for John Ford to arrive and talking to her. And about 40 minutes later, this this old dude walks into the room <laughs> wearing like a safari jacket a patch, and a yeah, patch the over an eye, yeah, yeah. chewing on a handkerchief oh with, a, with a, a, a half you know, chewed up and very masticated and wet cigar in his hand. <laughs> I saw all this stuff instantly, wow. you know. And he had kiss marks, but I mean like not not make out marks, but the kind of perfect kiss <laughs> marks, two on his cheek here, two here, a couple on the forehead. <laughs> And he walks right into his office, and his assistant grabs a box of Kleenex and runs in after him. <laughs> and then she comes out about five minutes later, and she's got the Kleenex. It's all red. Yeah. <laughs> Kleenex is all red. And she says, okay, you, you, you've, got, you've got five minutes, probably one minute right. wow. with him. That's right. it. And I walked into the office, and he was sitting behind his desk with his feet up on the desk. And he sat me down, and he just... Uh, said, so they tell me you want to be a picture maker, is what he called it. Wow. I, I never heard that before, but I never forgot it. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I, I really do. I've made all these little eight millimeter movies. And, and he said, what do you know? He said, what do you know about art? And I, 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 I was stammering. I wasn't expecting that question. He said, you see those paintings around the office? I said, yeah. He said, well, get up and walk over to the first painting. He said, tell me what you see in that painting. And I said, well, I see two Indians on horses. He said, no, 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 where's the horizon? Oh, wow. Wow. So I said, well, the horizon's you know, you know, way above the, the head of the Indians. He said, fine, walk on to the next one. He said, what do you see in that painting? And stupidly I said, well, there's some cavalry on horses. <laughs> I hadn't learned anything, you know. And he said, no, 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 where's the horizon? And I said, well, the horizon is the very, very bottom of the painting. He said, okay, get over here. And I stood in front of his desk. He said, when you're able to distinguish the art of the horizon at the bottom of a frame or at the top of the frame, but not going right through the center of the frame, when you're able to appreciate why it's at the top and why it's at the bottom, mm -hmm. you might make a pretty good picture maker. Mm -hmm. Now get the f out of here. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs>